for those that came before us. Thank you for paving the way. We stand on your shoulders. have you been here in Blacksburg? I've been in Blacksburg a lifetime. The Afro-Americans coming here, they are leaning on the legacy of Urban Pedro and the Charlie Yates that went before them. In high school, uh, my class sponsor um, indicated that she thought that the state was ready to integrate and that several schools, which were all white at the time, could possibly be interested in, in accepting a black candidate. I applied to all of the state schools, and the only reply I got back was from Virginia Tech. We were admitted to Virginia Tech under the requirement that we enroll as so-called day cadets while living and eating off campus in the um, black community. The bus station, I could, could go and get a burger or something, but all the other places in town, you had to go to the kitchen and get something to go. I, I sort of regret that being a part-time member of the Corps did not allow me to develop uh, my full, what I felt was my full leadership skills. Rumors were put out that the girls' schools would not allow their, their girls to attend the ring dance if I were allowed to go. I was uh, asked by the president who called me into his office that I not attend the ring dance, uh, and so I did not attend. James Whitehurst came he set out to change things. He was the first to, to live in the domes, and he was the first to go to ring dance, and he was the first to attempt to play football. At the time that I came through, I think Virginia Tech was at a point where it was desperate to get uh, an acceptable minority athlete into their school, and that just happened to be me. Being the first uh, African-American athlete there, obviously the people that I associated with were, were all white. That my mother called me and said that we were in Jet Magazine and that um, and that there was some mention about the first six black girls at Virginia Tech. So I guess that's how we basically came to know that we were the first because I don't think I even thought about it. It was probably one of the loneliest times of my life because of that because uh, you know you want that camaraderie with your athletes, uh, your fellow athletes, and uh, you want that camaraderie also with your fellow African-American students. Keeping in mind that in 1966, um, the Civil Rights Movement was still relatively strong. The idea of desegregation uh, or desegregating American society was still uh, very much an ideal. Uh, and my father thought that I had uh, much to, uh, to teach other people. Ironically, all of the black students had a black roommate. <laughs> Even though we were randomly, supposedly randomly given, uh, given assignments, we all had black roommates. And the one, and, and uh, we actually had seven of us on the same floor. <laughs> Not only were we the same roommates, we were on the same floor. And the one person that was odd had no roommate. The cheerleaders would come running out of that, um, out onto the field with this humongous uh, Confederate flag. And when they played Dixie, everybody stood. And I remember somebody tapped me on the shoulder once and saying that I need to stand. And I was wondering, what am I saying? Why would I stand for Dixie? And of course, I didn't. At that time, Virginia Tech had about 19,000 students. There were only about 250 uh, students of color during that time. So from a social standpoint, from a cultural exchange standpoint, there were challenges. And the professor had a British accent, he says, um, I wanted to see him, see what I'd missed. And he says to me, you know, I say, old chap, I noticed you weren't in my class on uh, uh, Thursday. 
So I reached up and I scratched my afro, and I said, how on earth did he know I wasn't in his class? They were writing um, editorials and articles in the Collegiate Times about how you know minority students were there only because of quotas. And you know that was challenging for me because I had strong SATs and strong uh, class rank, but to, to see in print where someone was saying you were only here because of a quota really can, can hit your self-esteem. Academics came really easy to me. Um, the biggest challenge was money. Um, my family was very poor and they were unable to really contribute to me at all. I mean, they never gave me money my whole time in college. Any little incident that you might have that you might find distasteful uh, uh, an encounter with uh, another student or uh, an encounter with, say, uh, a professor that you feel might have been a little bit biased, it would have been just enough of an impetus to, to say, well, en enough of this, forget it, I'm, I'm going back home and go to school there. But uh, with the help of some of the people, fellow athletes and, and a few of the professors there, like, we got through that and got beyond that. I have one professor, I think he had a special interest in making sure I was doing okay. Every year, at the end of the year, when we would leave Kogel Hall, you would pack up your stuff and you'd be leaving. And somehow, remarkably, every time it came to the end of the year, he would see me and his question was, are you coming back? And every year I said, yes. And I'll never forget that because, you know, you get a call from the president's office, you're a little bit concerned about what it is they might want to discuss with you. Um, but on this particular occasion, he just wanted to take me to lunch to find out how my internship was. When I was there, I think there was still this sense of pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps and, uh, and sort of bonding together and making sure that we all work together in order to get through. The good thing was that uh, when we did come together, it was uh, oftentimes a, a great opportunity to share like experiences and to be able to look very closely at the challenges that we all had academically and to just help each other out. And in that way, we were able to build a strong community. When I was there, if you saw somebody black, you may not have known their name or whatever, but it was an automatic wave, hey, how you doing, as you passed them. And that created sort of this fraternal uh, atmosphere and that we looked out for each other because we were so few in numbers. There were very few organizations on campus and you had the Human Relations Council members of which uh, I was president at the time and there's a couple of fraternities uh, that were on campus as well during that time. Uh, and, and there wasn't that kind of support system we had uh, when I finished and started working there. Black Student Alliance, that was the second semester of my freshman year. I didn't know anyone, so joining that organization really helped get me used to the environment. Um, I found friends there, a support system as well. You know, I think one of the best programs that we had in place um, was the Peer Group Leaders Program. It was a program that um, Calvin Jameson and Glenn Valentine had started, and what they um, realize was the the isolation they wanted to do something that would address the isolation that black students experienced when they came to tech i would say that the peer group leader program was the one that really helped me because it wasn't just about okay where do i go to get my hair cut it was about how do you schedule and you know how do you take advantage of those things how do you you know deal with social interaction with people with professors the black culture center and multicultural center both were um, student initiatives. I remember some of the, you know, the debates, the battles, the fights just to have a room. And that says a lot that you have to go through all of those efforts, but it's also great that the students were able to go through it and the university was able to see that that was the support that the students needed. An organization was formed on Tech's campus called Group I Group, and I happened to be one of the six that went to Virginia State University in Petersburg to start that chapter. The initiation of traditionally black fraternities and sororities helped to sustain a black feeling of community there. It gave me an opportunity to meet others, it gave me an opportunity to develop my leadership skills. I used to go to the fraternity parties on campus, I used to dance, I used to be very involved with the uh, Black Cultural Center, I participated in the uh, Miss Black and Gold pageant a couple of times for the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. I was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority and um, I was also a sweetheart for one of the fraternities, the Sigma, um, Sigma Tau. I formed many friendships 
from that time in my life that exists even until today. People I met first week at Virginia Tech. Without them, I don't think I could have um, gone, I could have finished. You know what, when you look back on it now, those were some of the best times. It was fun trying to figure out how you're gonna have a good time in a one horse town, <laughs> you, know? you know? In the early stages, you could get the entire black population in, in one apartment, and that's what you would have a party until they grew, and then it moved to Squire's rehearsal room, and it ultimately grew even more than that. Of course, as you got older, there was the possibility of more of your contemporaries having vehicles to go different places. My, most of my socializing extended to areas outside of Blacksburg because Blacksburg was so limited in population that that I had to go far <laughs> to find the, the ladies. So, I, you know, I became one of those crazy, hokey student fans, and unfortunately, I'm still there today. <laughs> Being inducted into the Hall of Fame was, to me, a very great honor. Uh, I felt more deeply about that than I did about graduating, in fact. From, the, from that individual who the first week there swore he was going to transfer, to graduation day having being rather tearful because I felt like I was leaving a part of my life. My mother, uh, both of my grandmothers, uh, uncle, aunt, uh, friends, cousins, uh, were all at Virginia Tech to see me graduate. And uh, since in fact that was indeed the first time that an African American had graduated, uh, this represented a, a real accomplishment, and I was quite proud of that. The look on their faces and the pride in their faces um, um, is something I'll never forget. I was the first person from my family to graduate from a mainstream university, so that meant a lot because there are different support systems there, and I felt like, okay, that's accomplishing a lot. For me in particular, it was um, a dream, a big dream, because I came from a very poor family, and um, no one in my family had gone to college before, so this was huge for me. It never was there a doubt in my mind that I wouldn't finish college, and that really paved the way for others behind me and my family to at least try it. You feel like you've done something for, for lack of a better term, the people. I was mouthing uh, at that point the late Martin Luther King, you know, I've been to the mountaintop and it's time for me to get off. I was able to graduate on time and uh, knowing afterwards uh, that I would be able to uh, go into the, uh, to the workforce with, uh, with a degree that actually had great substance. I can't put a, a limit on what the value of the degree was. People see that degree and they'll know that you can survive, you can excel in whatever environment that you happen to find yourself. Then every time I've been faced with a challenge in life, now I know I can move through it and it's, it's made me a stronger person. It opened the doors for places that I had not been before, and it set the foundation. There are Hokies all over the world. Being part of the Hokie Nation carries you a, a long way, a long ways. And I think we may have had, maybe at one time out of the 10 people in the section, six of us were Virginia Tech graduates. Virginia Tech has a very stellar academic reputation. And I have to honestly say, I've never met an African-American alumnus from Virginia Tech that wasn't doing well. And I've grown to like Tech because they voluntarily accepted me at a time when they didn't have to. Although it was conditional, it wasn't fully open, still it was something that, that started, something that, uh, that still exists, you know, and, and prospers to this day as a result. Having a residence hall named after me was uh, an experience that, that I enjoyed. I never imagined it would come to that. I just hope that, that somehow it means enough to others that, that it has an impact that, uh, that is highly favorable. The value of diversity is understanding. If we are living together in all of our differences, then we begin to understand that difference. The more diverse a group is, the more likely they are to begin to understand where that difference comes from. Ultimately, diversity is going to bring peace.